next week. Now the winter here in North Carolina will be getting colder, but it won't be nearly as cold as other parts of the country. One of those places is Steamboat Springs, Colorado, where we find our very own chief meteorologist Wes Hohenstein bundled up for the 2013 Steamboat Weather Summit. Hey, Wes. Hey, Jeremy, when we left Raleigh yesterday, as you guys know, it was in the mid 70s, around 70 today. We landed yesterday. It was one this morning, minus 23. But the sun is out and it warmed all the way up to about one again today. As you can see behind me, the slopes as we uh, get ready to continue the 2013 Steamboat Weather Summit. Our temperature right now is just below zero. So, yes, this is what winter should feel like. You know, last year, we spent a good portion of the time at the uh, Steamboat Summit talking about hurricanes. Strange to be talking about hurricanes in the middle of the winter when there's snow, but uh, it's a good time to learn in the off season. Well, today, a very interesting topic. We kicked off the conference talking about forecasters for major sporting events. So the PGA events you watch on NBC, the Olympics, both winter and summer, we learned about what the forecasters at those events go through. So while, you know, Tiger Woods and Rory and Phil are on the course making shots, there are forecasters in a trailer on the course working with the forecast and the officials to make decisions about the course. When that storm is about 30 miles away, we give them a heads up or in contact on the radios with them. We say, hey, there's a storm over here, might get to the course around this time, give them a heads up. And when that starts getting closer, maybe give them another heads up at 15 miles. And then when it gets to eight miles, that's kind of starting to get to the point where you start thinking about suspending play. Now, coming up tonight at 7 on NBC 17 News, we will talk to one of the forecasters for the Boston Red Sox and what kind of pressure he has, especially during a big Yankees series. And, of course, we're about a year away from the uh, Winter Olympics over in Russia. It definitely feels like it here today. We're going to be warming up to the teens and 20s later in the week. And it's, Ooh, again, we balmy. got snow, not like the rain you guys have. <laughs> I'm surprised your teeth aren't chattering out there. Thanks, Wes. We'll see you at 7. Coming up. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy with the forecast here in North Carolina. Meanwhile, this week, Wes is working in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Wes, I'm sure you could tell I was using air quotes with working there. Uh, how are things at the 2013 Weather Summit today? Well, I tell you what, it was 80 degrees colder here than it was there. This morning started off at minus 23 as we kicked off the 2013 Steamboat uh, Weather Summit. And you guys got rain, we got snow on the ground. And temperatures right now, I think the high today was only like one. We're about eight below right now. However, above the thermometer, skies are clear, but perfect proof that in the wintertime, sunshine doesn't do anything to warm you up. Again, barely above zero today. The snow cats are out on the slopes already. If you look really closely behind me, the sun's just now setting. I don't know if you can see it. Penn Holdernesses, uh, one of his winter homes is right back there. So hopefully uh, we'll be up there celebrating <laughs> later tonight. You know, Penn, we kicked off the uh, summit this morning. You know, last year we talked about hurricanes. Kind of strange talking about hurricanes in the snow. This year we started by talking with some of the forecasters who work the PGA events, the Winter and Summer Olympics, and someone who is the forecaster for the Boston Red Sox. I know we have a lot of Sox fans and a lot of anti-Sox fans in the triangle. But we talked to him about while the general manager may be making trades upstairs, he's downstairs helping to make decisions about weather and conditions on the field. So we talk directly to kind of the field management crew, but also if there's thunderstorms in the area, we might be talking to the umpires too. And so the umpires will get in on the call and they'll say, hey, when is it okay to play or is it okay to play right now if there's thunderstorms 30 miles to the west? Yeah, big decisions to be made there, not only for the game, which may or may not be on TV, but also all the fans. And he says when it's a big series, like versus the Yankees, they could be on the phone to the Red Sox up to 50 times in just wow. one day. Talk about pressure. It's funny because you always wonder, do they just look at their phones at the radar? But it seems a lot more complicated when it comes to big money like baseball games. Yeah, and it's not only about rain uh, during the game, but that field needs rain when they're not playing. They put a tarp on it. If the sun's out when the tarp's on, it'll fry the grass and kill it. And then, yeah, when all the fans arrive, you have to worry about their safety from thunderstorms, could be tornadoes, anything like that. And, yeah, that's just, you know how much we hear about uh, baseball trades and what's going on behind the scenes. Just add another layer yeah. to that with figuring out the forecast. If you know Wes Hohenstein, weather 
plus skiing plus baseball. He is in heaven right now. Wes, thank you for your time. We'll see you a little bit later. All right, guys. Time for a look right. at this. You've seen a herd in the U.S. And right now, there's a winter storm moving its way across the country. Our chief meteorologist, Wes Hohenstein, live in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And Wes, the Weather Channel is now in the business of naming these winter storms, right? Yeah, and we'll uh, talk to someone from the Weather Channel in just a second, but we're living in winter. We got a heat wave, though, actually, today. Remember, yesterday we started at minus 23, this morning minus 14, and we got all the way up to about 7 or 8. It's uh, about 2 right now, and the slopes are just closing down. Of course, we're here for the 2013 Weather Summit, so you have a whole bunch of weather nerds here, present company included, and that includes uh, my friend from the Weather Channel, Mike Bettis. Yes, Heck of an introduction. Night, baby, right? So we just got done talking back at home about... Uh, Helen. And yeah. so this is the first year of the Weather Channel. Uh, can talk to me about why you guys decided to start naming winter storms? Well, I think much like uh, hurricanes, you know, when they have a name, they have a lot more, you know, um, notoriety. People take right. people take notice of them and then people take action. And so I think that, you know, so many people are impacted by winter weather. I think it was a natural choice for us to just to raise awareness for people to be prepared for winter weather when it strikes, whether it be snow, whether it be cold, whether it be ice. Right. What, what's the reaction been when you've been out talking to people? Do they I like think, it? I think it's been positive. I mean, people can put, can put a name to a storm. Right. You know, just don't you remember that storm way back in 92 or whatever? They can put a name to it. And, you know, social media has been real key in that as well. Now, the last time uh, we saw Mike Bettis in person in Raleigh, you were covering our tornado outbreak about a year and a half ago. Um, I can't believe it's been a year and a half, right. but do you, do you remember being there? I mean, what's, what's that been like? Yeah, oh, distinctly. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget it, you know, especially considering, you know, the neighborhoods that it hit. I was shocked that more people weren't injured mm -hmm. in that tornado outbreak, but I think it kind of set the stage, you know, for all these major metropolitan areas that were hit in 2011, and it just became, you know, a very tragic year, and it kind of all began in the Carolinas. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I apologize for the weather nerd reference. I... <laughs> it's okay. We, we, we're good with that, okay. though. We, we, we take pride in that, right? Yeah, we do. We do. Mike Bettis, of course, you can see him most mornings on Your Weather Today on the Weather Channel. And I think the low tonight's only supposed to be down to about minus 10. So, like I said, a heat wave here at Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Just minus 10. Thanks, Wes. We'll see you later. Right. So no as the actual event gets closer. Now, speaking of snow, our chief meteorologist Wes Hohenstein is live in Steamboat Springs at the 2013 Steamboat Springs Weather Summit. Wes, you've been keeping an eye on this storm all the way out there, haven't you? Yeah, you know, it's been kind of ironic, Jeremy. We've been live out here uh, all week long. We were joking earlier in the week when it was minus 23 here that, you know, cold air moves ac across the country west to east, and that's exactly what's happening here. This is a pattern change that's really affecting the entire United States. That cold air here is headed to North Carolina. Now, not minus 23, but cold enough to, as you just said, change some rain to snow. So what's been happening is we've had this big ridge of high pressure, and that's why we were in the 70s just a few days ago. And then you had a big dip in the jet stream in the western part of the country. Well, as everything goes into motion, things across the country move west to east. That cold air is, again, starting to head toward the mid-Atlantic, toward North Carolina. And it will arrive tomorrow night, and it will stick around. Now, the rain's not going to stay around for that long, so that's why eventually everything will end, but it's a huge pattern change. Now, the snow here at Steamboat Springs, 150 inches so far this season. We don't have that much, but we have enough where it's causing some concern. So we'll continue to stay on top of it. I'll be back in the studio in North Carolina tomorrow night. For now, let's head back to the studio tonight. All right, thanks a lot, Wes. That hat you've got there for all of you at home, I think that's going to come in handy as we head into uh, the next 24 hours as we get the first snow of the season so far. So back to Penn and Melanie. All right, thanks, Jeremy, for this week. Well, the weather is our top story, and tonight we've got team coverage. Our Wes Hohenstein standing by with just how much snow we may be dealing with tomorrow night. But we still have to get through tonight, and for that, we check in with meteorologist Jeremy Baker. Jeremy? Well, the good news is we're not expecting any winter weather impacts tonight. That won't happen until tomorrow. We have a winter storm watch that's now posted by the National Weather Service. That's in effect from 6 o'clock tomorrow evening until 4 o'clock on Friday morning. You can take a look and see what I'm talking about. The county shaded and blows from the triangle on northward. That's where we're expecting those winter weather impacts later on or tomorrow night. Rather for today, we're just going to deal with some more of those showers overnight tonight. Tomorrow, the rain changes to snow between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. 
Thursday evening. The heaviest of the snow will fall between 8 o'clock tomorrow night and midnight. Snow exiting by 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday. So by the time you wake up Friday morning, the snow will be gone, but there could still be some of it on the ground. Live Precision Viper will show that we have that storm. You can't really make it out. It's the one down to the south in parts of Alabama and Georgia. That's getting itself together and coming our way. How much snow are we talking about? We're talking as much as 3 to 6 inches for our Virginia border counties, one to three inches around the triangle and then towards the sand hills, mainly up to an inch on grassy surfaces. Most of that accumulation will be on grassy surfaces across our area, but some of it could pile up on some of those untreated roadways. Coming up, I'll break it down for you hour by hour so you can know what to expect as we head into tomorrow night. So we've been talking about that snow here in North Carolina for the last 24 hours. Our chief meteorologist Wes Hohenstein has had his head in snow all week long. He's live at the 2013 Steamboat Springs Weather Summit in Colorado. Hey, Wes. Hey, Jeremy, good evening to you and to everyone uh, back at home. You know, we joked earlier this week when it was minus 23 here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, that that cold weather, like everything else around the country, moves from west to east when it comes to the weather world. Well, it's not going to be minus 23, but it's going to be cold enough to make things interesting, as Jeremy just said, tomorrow night. So let's look big picture. As you know, we, along with a majority of the east coast, have been really warm the last several days. I mean, it was close to 80 a few days ago. But meanwhile, most of the western part of the United States has been really cold. Well, that pattern is about to change. And yes, some of the cold air here in Colorado, here in the western part of the United States, is moving across the country. And that's what's going to change things from rain to snow tomorrow. And it doesn't look like we'll have a big warm up. So the cold air is going to stick around a while. So a lot to get ready for. And it's kind of strange. You know, we made it up to 20 here today. Things are starting to warm up. So the pattern already starting to change here at the 2013 Steamboat Weather Summit. So far this year, here in Steamboat Springs, about 150 inches of snow. Thankfully, not that much coming to Raleigh, but of course, we'll be on top of it. I'll be back in the studio with you, Jeremy, tomorrow night. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Wes. And I'll break it down for you hour by hour with this snowstorm so you can know what to expect tomorrow night and how that could affect your commute home.